Good afternoon, dear Sriparam. Welcome again. Uh, thank you for joining us again today. Um, you have started the online school of Hindu Tantra, which is all about your teachings. Um, you, you basically your teachings are based on the sacredness of the womb. Can you tell us a bit more about that sacredness? Why is why are your teachings so much about the sacredness of the womb? No, basically it's simple. If women don't transform their lives, if women don't cherish their womb, or even the gateway to the womb, which is the vagina, then we would never return to our beautiful, normal, pristine level. Because the woman is the first guru. So for the world to transform itself, we need women to first transform themselves. Because they, it's, when I mean transform themselves, that they're bad and they got to become good. No, they got to reclaim their power. Reclaim their power. Yeah, it's about reclaiming the power. Not about judgment, not about bad, good or indifferent. All women are born divine. It's just that society over the thousands of years have worked systematically to take away her power. Now, so a lot of time when we talk about reclaiming, like, you know, you, you hear New Tantra talking about better sex, this, nobody's talking about the real essence of what has to be reclaimed, what has to be done to transform this world. How are we going to get back into harmony with nature? Only women can take us on that journey. That's a big responsibility for women. It is nature. not a responsibility as such. If you think about it, if she reclaims her power, then the other parts of it is very automatic. It just happens. Because then she opens herself to the real wisdom of the universe and of nature rather than now trying to compete like men in this world. Men have never been a competition. Men always depended on you as women. Just that they, they don't know how to deal with you. Because you don't know how to deal with yourself. Your emotions, because you are working from an area which is alien to you, which is the brain. Because your nature is from the soul, from the source, from the womb. Your creative power is the womb. So when you move from the womb to your head, you lose that nurturing power, that gracefulness that comes within women, that everything is natural. I mean, your stamina improves, Everything about you transforms. You don't have to even worry about being transformed. You don't have to worry about the burden, because then it's not a burden. When you breastfeed a child, is it a burden? Or is it a natural thing? Well, it's a natural thing, but it can it also can. be quite exhausting for a woman, for a woman's body. So it then depends again on the support of a man and, you know, to... No, the question is this, the woman's body never gets exhausted in, the, in that real rhythm because her energy flow is very powerful, too powerful to make her be exhausted. It is modern women that feel exhausted, feel the pressure of being, being a mother, being... I mean, like... At one time, women used to rejoice in being a mother. Mm -hmm. Now you have two, two syndromes that normally takes place. One is postnatal and one is prenatal syndromes. Those things never existed in the ancient times. Because women, were, women are born powerful. They're not meant to... It's like having menstrual pain. Menstrual pain is not natural. It's an imbalance in the body. Yeah, but Sri Param, um, aren't you kind of imagining like an ideal society where, where 
isn't that uh, appropriate in this time and age you know uh, at the moment in most societies women and men need to work in su to sustain uh, their family life you know there's there's a lot of pressure on men and women to you know to basically survive oh i agree i agree totally that this is the scenario in today's world but do we want to go on living this way do we want a better alternative it's a question of looking at an alternative way of life that would change the scenario. Because men were always protectors and providers. What happened to them? And women were always nurturers, gatherers. They, they have stamina more than a man. Today, they're both suffering. Lack of stamina, lack of dignity, lack of purpose. Today it's no more, there's no difference between a man and a woman as far as social roles are concerned. So what happened to the children that come? They neither have a father nor a mother. They have two biological beings pretending to be parents. That's what's happening and that's what we don't need anymore. Okay, so how, how, how are we going to go about reclaiming our power as women? As women, you need to reclaim the power of your womb. Simple first step. How do you do that? Because, you know, Basically, it's... with mantras. One, mantras would re-energize the womb, okay? But then there is another question. You've got to be convinced that you are sacred. Mm -hmm. So for that, you have to learn more about Tantra than any other science. Tantra is virtually a perfect science. A lot of women out there, they go to yoga classes. Where does that originate from? They do pranayama. Where does that originate from? So you're taking small sectors of the teaching rather than the whole teaching. The whole teaching is basically a, a way of life. It's not just one segment of your life. Yeah. You kind of fit in the Western. You know, do you suggest then that we go back to, you know, ancient way of living? So the women go in the kitchen, take care of the kids, and the men go out, you know, work on I the I don't say home. that you, you do that now, okay? Mm -hmm. The question is this, if you have kids, you know kids need you, mm -hmm. okay? Until they are ready to fly, they need your care, complete attention. Okay, working mothers, what happened to the kids? I don't say, okay, now all working mothers should drop their jobs and go back to being mothers. But what I'm, because today's society cannot be sustained that way. But how do we change that even the small amount of time that we spend with our kids is meaningful? That's the, that's the program that I'm interested in. So whatever I share, all the lessons I share in the sacred womb um, lessons is only, only to give you the background of all the different yogas that is available, how to practice it. So basically and the tools that we need in order to reclaim our power within the society that we have to live in, that we live in at the moment. No, the question <laughs> is, is you've got to first transform yourself and then mm -hmm. transform the society. Yes, it's, but we first have to reclaim our power, right? Yeah. So in your teaching, in your classes, you basically give tools for women, but I guess also for men, because, you know, they need to also... Oh. Uh, you give us the tools in order to reclaim the power and to kind of change our mindset or change our way of behaving or mindset. And then um, tr and from there, when you start from there, you kind of... Uh, you know, it's like a ripple effect. If more people would do it, then society eventually will also change. Change, yeah. The question is that this, this program is for both men and women, mm -hmm. not just for women. Okay. Men have to learn the same science to be able to support women in that role that they have. Mm -hmm. Because in the ancient times, Tantra was created for men. Not for women. Women were born naturally divine. It's only when they started using their pants that now they now have to learn what was natural to them to be again reinvoked. 
because if you look at a lot of times my students in, a, in the beginning they used to say why everything is he not she and he because she didn't need to thousands of years ago women did not need to do any sadhana the the being the mother being the light of the home was total sadhana because they live all day in sadhana because their focus is not about themselves always about the the family whereas the man is focused outside the world going hunting going looking for money looking for wealth he's always focused outside of himself a woman is focused inwards so she never needed to do mantras she never needed to do anything but the minute women wore the pants and decided to to become what they say another funny way of reclaiming themselves is to diminish their strength women don't need to reclaim their strength in society they need to reclaim the strength within themselves then the society will reclaim them so they don't have to do anything the war of the sexes got to end men have to be rec- be who they are and women have to be who they are and each one has to recognize each other this lack of recognition today women want men to be like women and women men want like women to be like like men at the same time they don't like that's conflict in it they don't they don't know what they're looking for they've lost the focus they they lost the idea of what reality is all about so the society is confused is confused basically yeah because we forgot that the women are the power women are known as shakti power So feminism in your opinion what do you think of that It's about not about becoming shakti hmm. is becoming shiva or competing with shiva How can you compete with that that means you conflict within your left and right side of your body This conflict is not an external conflict it's an internal conflict where you actually fight with yourself Remember that the male and female within you you need to learn how to harmonize that energy within you then the harmony outside of you will happen but at the moment what happens like men they women are looking outside of themselves and the the battle is never ending i mean when i started teaching in 77 the same problem and today in 2040 years for this 40 years later it's still the same problem but the level is accelerated because now they are not competing with each other they don't know how to live in harmony with each other there's always a consistent challenge between each other or both competing each other with each other and that's not a family family is when you find harmony and basically the the cause the sacred womb is about not just about women but about also men how they can apply tantra to find that harmony and stop the war of the sexes so that not if you don't want to do it for yourself it's okay but at least do it for the next generation or stop even wanting to have children Don't get married, don't have children. Actually go and join one of those nunneries. But if you want to have family, you want to have a normal life, then tantra is the main tool that you can have. And when you do when you study about sacred womb, you work, you talk about how you want to work in harmony. with the divine architects within your womb it's not about i mean today when they talk about sacred womb they talk about dancing they talk about um 
they talk about affirmation, they talk about, you know, women together, coming together. But how many of them actually say, I know anything about the womb? Do they know what creates a baby? Do you know what energy that creates a baby? That is what sacred womb will help you understand. What is it that creates you? What is it that makes your womb powerful to be able to create a child? And then the question comes is this, the more power the divine architect in your body have, the more beautiful and powerful your child will be. The less power your womb has or the divine architects have, then you have problem with having children with autism or any form of illness or any form of deficiency. That is what the womb, sacred womb is all about. Not about dancing and, and doing yoga and singing, but doing real sadhana. And if you want to learn real sadhana, then this course is good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Param. Wanakam. Wanakam.